So today we are going to understand how we have managed to put all these millions and billions of stars out there in this space into this beautiful looking diagram, which is called the hertzsprung russell diagram or famously the HR diagram. The diagram was first developed from the charts in the year 1911 by the Danish astronomer N.R. Hertzsprung and independently developed by the US astronomer Henry Norris Russell. But apart from all of this, why is this diagram so important? Well, there are two reasons. The first one is, of course, it is a much better looking diagram than any of the graphs out there. And the second thing is that it really speaks out a lot of things. You see, we have a set relationship here between the star's temperature, its absolute magnitude, its luminosity, spectral class, and its temperature, which are quite a lot of things for a single diagram. Based on images for the Hubble Space Telescope, we've assembled a true plot that is a snapshot of the life history of stars in this ancient cluster. And not only this, you can also visually differentiate between different categories of stars just by looking at this diagram. You see here at the top are the red giant stars and the super giants, and the bottom are the red dwarfs and the white dwarfs, and in the middle you see the main sequence stars. Now if you watched my video on stellar classification, you might understand the terms like the absolute magnitude and the luminosity which are actually both directly related to the star's intrinsic brightness. We are going to make use of both of them in this diagram. So let's come to the diagram now. Now at the bottom part of this axis of this graph, here we plot the temperature of the stars. You see, unlike most of the graphs out there you might have seen, the temperature here actually decreases by going from the left to right. For the vertical axis here, what we can have is the absolute magnitude and the luminosity of the star. Now, if you want to complete the box for the top part of this diagram here, we can label the different spectral classes of the stars here. You see, we already know the temperature spectral classes, which are the O, B, A, F, G, K, M. We can just put all of them right here at the top in the decreasing order from the O to M. So now if we are going to plot the information of the different stars out there in the universe, we are going to have this nice looking plot. And this plot has the information of their brightness, their temperatures, and their color. So there you go. These are all the stars that what you'll find in the HR diagram. But interestingly, you can see that the population for the most of the stars happen to go around this diagonal line. This line of stars is actually the category of the main sequence stars. And these stars, as you can finally see, are the most abundant of them out there. Now as far as the relationship between the star's temperature and brightness is concerned, there isn't really a set parameter for which we can say that the brighter a star is, the hotter it should be. Different stars follow different relationships. But as far as the main sequence stars are concerned, we can generally say that the brighter a star is, the hotter it would be. Because it follows this gradient in this graph. Now another thing to notice here is that the stars on the extreme ends of these graphs, which is at the top or at the bottom, are falling under the category of the giants and dwarfs. Well, this is because the luminosity of a star is directly related to its surface area, which means that the bigger a star is, the more bright it should be. This is the reason why the giants and the super giants are actually the brightest stars out there in the universe. And dwarfs aren't really that bright. Now coming to a diagram, you can see this is the line of the main sequence stars. Our sun is, for example, also a main sequence star. And the stars above and below this line are actually on the extreme end, which are the giants and the dwarfs. So on marking the locations of different kinds of stars, the location of the white dwarf stars is actually right here on the diagram. Now you see that the white dwarfs are actually on the lower end of this luminosity and absolute magnitude, which is that they aren't really that bright, but they are extremely hot on this side of the temperature scale. So they are really small and they have really high temperatures. Now on the opposite end of this diagram or the opposite corner, what you'll find is this is the position of the red giants or the red super giants. Now at this position you'll find that the star is actually on the much cooler end of the temperature and it has lower temperatures but it is extremely big and also it is extremely bright. Similarly there are different categories of stars like the blue giants which are the hot super giant stars which are also extremely big and extremely hot and then of course on the opposite end you will also have the stars which have the low temperatures and also they are quite small. 
So they're also cool. These are the red dwarfs. So with the HR diagram, we can also label the luminosity classes in this diagram, which as we have seen in the last video, are actually one for the brightest or the highest luminosity of the stars, which is the supergiants, and five for the main sequence star. So if you label this on this diagram, you'll have this line at the number five of the main sequence star. And as you go further up and up in the diagram, this would be where the first or the brightest supergiant stars would be. So I think HR Diagram does a pretty good job in telling you what kind of stars are just subdivided and distributed into different categories throughout the universe and how abundant they are and also what kind of relationship they have with the temperatures, brightness and the color. So that is a lot of information. Considering that the diagram isn't really that hard to look at and you just need to read the labels and you'll probably understand what it's trying to say. So that's it for this one and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Till then, happy star visit. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.